What's happening, folks? I'm back with another reaction. Back with some more Hard House. Indeed, um, it's a genre I haven't reacted to as much um, because, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not something um, I continue to mix as regularly as Acid Techno and Acid Trance. Um, and indeed, I got into Acid Techno and Acid Trance late 96, early 97. Um, but by the late uh, 2000, or by the late 2000s, by the late 90s, um, I did get into a genre called Hard House, New Energy, um, many of the tracks using the Hoover synth, sometimes called the Mentasm synth, a lot of the best tracks in that genre, mixing the Hoover sound with acid sounds, um, and achieving a flavor, I would say, somewhere between Hard House and Hard Trance, or at the very least, the, the best Hard House of the late 90s, early 2000s, I think, incorporated a bit more of a hard trance sound than hard house that had come earlier than that. Uh, so yeah, during those years I got very into hard house. I never like stopped listening to acid trance or acid techno and again my favorite hard house is some of the hard house tracks that would also have acid. I just reacted not too long ago to a remix of a track called Docalis. Uh, that's a perfect example of the type of hard house I was into. Um, so again, over time, I sort of gravitated back toward acid techno and acid trance more primarily. Um, but I've always held a sweet spot for late 90s, early 2000s hard house. And there are artists who've continued to make hard house in that style into the modern era. In many cases, like digital only tracks, but um, in some cases still on vinyl. In any case, we're going to go back for a classic tune. Um, I believe this is 1999. Let me just make sure I've got that right. I did have it open. Yeah, it's 1999. Um, I reacted to this tune on my old channel. I won't tell as long of an anecdote, but I will say this is a track that um, I heard on like a radio mix, which is pretty rare that a hard house tune with some real sort of stomp and some wicked sound was played on a Southern California radio station in the late 90s, but it was like a Saturday night, like, you know, two in the morning, like dance mix. And I heard it, and I sort of sought it out, and I was able to figure out what it was called. It's called Nine Bar by OD404, but it's the BK, I think, like, Decibel remix. Uh, BK, Ben Keen, uh, Ben Keen, K-E-E-N. Um, one of my favorite hard house artists, and pretty much the guy who got me to pay attention to this style of music in the first place. Uh, but yeah, he does a really great remix with an artist. I think he's done a couple um, remixes with uh, Decibel. He's like the, you know, it's like DB but the, like, flipped. Um, in any case, the point is, um, this remix, uh, I couldn't find in the record shops I was going to at the time. My parents were about to take a trip to England, not with me, I should add. Uh, but I was like, hey, when you're over there, see if you can pick up this record. Uh, and then when they were over there, my mom remembered when they were, like, out shopping one day. So they, like, found a record shop, and they went in, and I guess there were some seedy-looking people, tattoos, dreadlocks, whatever, playing loud techno music. And my mom was like, oh, do you have a record called Nine Bar by OD404? And I guess the guy laughed. He's like, you're asking for that record? Because my mom was like 50-something at the time. Uh, and so, yeah, she, uh, I guess she was like, yeah, my son's looking for it. He's like, oh, no, we, we sold out of that copy. We don't have it. But, you know, that's funny that you're asking for it. So eventually I think I got it um, online. I think it was either um, either Discogs or maybe like uh, bangintunes.com or something like that. But either way, it's a fantastic track. It's a classic hard house tune. Uh, so let's get to it. As I said, um, this is OD4049 bar. It's on Cacti Records, um, which apparently was in East Sussex. Um, don't know if they're one of the labels. You know, some of these labels have come back like in the digital era and they've released their old catalog, even put out new records. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Cacti. This is a record that once I heard it on that radio mix, I knew I had to have it, so uh, let's get it. This is BK, I think, yeah, this side, BK, oh, that's right, it's like DBM, so like decibel, like, M. I'm not sure, like, if it's just DBM or if it's supposed to be, like, decibels. Either way, BK and DBM's 10 kilo mix of 9 bar by OD404, and as I said, 1999. Don't get any funny ideas. Eventually, God. Iconic, like 
is a track, uh, another tune where like, I had a lot of friends in the different scenes and not all my friends were ravers. Even some of my friends who weren't into parties and raving um, were fond of this tune. It's a bass line that's gonna drop in a minute. Classic hard house bass line. That moment got a lot of people's attention again, even people who didn't go to parties. And then like, I think this is just a 32, maybe a 64 after that. It'll bring in another layer of the bass. It's heavier, it's deeper, like more grinding. So like it comes in like party hard house and then a minute later it's like, no, there's grit too, hold on. Trying to figure out if she should attack the record. Trying to discourage this. It's interesting though, this part I think is like. It's epic, it's wicked. But I will say my favorite stretch of the record is that first like two, two and a half minutes. I like this, but that opening part. Even more. I do like at the break. Cheap and percussive roll with everything else dropping out right in the last second.
that rhythm is really unique to this track. Like, I'm sure there are other tracks that have it, but like, I remember when I would mix this style, and like, just in that clap alone, there'd be people like, who I knew would be like, oh shit, like, I know what's coming. that's like closed off or something. Excellent. Uh, again, it's an all-time classic in the genre. Um, I think many people who know Hard House from the late 90s, early 2000s will know that track. Um, although it's interesting, again, I think BK is mostly known for his work on Nucleus, especially the blue Nucleus imprint. Um, although he did do some like remixes on the green and so on, um, but ultimately, yeah, um, it's I think it's the only Cacti record I have. Um, again, I think it was like I don't know if it was Od Four Hundred Four's label specifically, um, but I do think he's on multiple records on the label. Uh, in any case, um, yeah, I really enjoy the tune. It's you know it's sort of a classic, and again because it had this weird like history with me where like. I heard it, took me a little while, figured out what it was, still took me a while to get it after that. It was one of those you know, purchases where when I finally had it in my hands and on my turntable, it was very satisfying because it was like, ah, oh, this is like a multi-year quest to get this record. Um, you know, that was back before Discogs. Like basically, um, I started using Discogs 04. I think I got it before that. So I think it must have been um, either bangingtunes.com or maybe like Satellite Records. These were some early um, online record shops where you could, you know, um, oh, what was the other one? hardtofindrecords.com, I think that was another one that I used. Um, but again, when I found Discogs, it was a game changer, because it was like, oh, I can like, you know, buy directly, I can search for a specific copy, I can know at least, you know, um, as uh, up to what a seller describes it as, I can know the condition of a record and so on. Um, so that was a game changer, but I think I got it before that. So um, yeah, I would say like maybe bangingtunes.com, but either way, um, it was very satisfying when I got it. So I'm sure many of you vinyl collectors will know what that's like. Especially when there's a record that's sort of rare or because it was very popular, you know, new and it was never like repressed. Um, getting a, a copy in good condition at a reasonable price, it can be a bit of a mission. Um, you know, there's some where like they were in my um, want list for years and then finally a copy became available. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, near mint copy for a reasonable price. I'm all over it. So, um, yeah, it was one of those satisfying experiences. Do let me know what you think of the tune. I will see you next time. Peace.